everybody. Today we are going to do an advanced PNG tuber tutorial. I'm going to show you how to set up a dynamic PNG tuber that will blink, that will react to your voice, that has dynamic lighting elements, that has some simple animation and has toggleable accessories. And I'm going to show you how I do all of it in a way that doesn't lead to me having a bunch of duplicate sources. In order to complete this tutorial, you are going to need a couple of things. So let's make a list. You are absolutely going to need PNG images of your character. You will also need PNG images of any accessories that you would like to use. The higher quality these images are, the better your result will be. You can also use GIFs. Please make sure to disclose your intended purpose for any art you commission. Make sure that if you're using any images you're finding online, that you know what it can be used for and what it can be cannot be used for. Some folks may be fine with you using their P crew for purposes like this and others may not. Be sure to read the terms and conditions. Obviously, if you draw your own art, you have nothing to be concerned about. You're going to need a microphone and a keyboard. Sometimes keyboards comes with additional macro keys and those can be handy, but it's not required. You can use a different microphone to trigger your PNG tuber uh, than the one that you use to pick up your sound. Lastly, you're going to need a copy of OBS, open broadcasting software installed on your computer. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial and we're going to start at the beginning. For this tutorial, we're going to use VitoTube Mini. You're going to need to download and install VitoTube. I will leave a link to do that in the description. This program is totally free, but I strongly encourage you to support the developer if you use this program on the regular and really enjoy it. If you would like to see continued development for VitoTube Mini and tools like it, your support goes a really long way to doing that. Here is VitoTube Mini. First, let's go through all of the different things that you're going to see in VitoTube mini and explain what all of them do. First things first, here at the top, you see the four images that make up my character. An image with the eyes open and the mouth closed. An image with the eyes open and the mouth open. An image with the eyes closed and the mouth closed. And an image with the eyes closed and the mouth open. Each of these can be set up however you like. The open mouth images are activated while I'm talking. And the blinking images, the closed eyes images, are switched to at random intervals. Here we have an example of me using VitoTube for something that it's not exactly designed for. I have Miss Mothmom's hand set up. Instead of blinking, her hand switch between the top and bottom triggers. This sort of gives the illusion that Miss Mothmom is playing video games with this controller. Next to these four images are three movement options. The first is the movement the character does when the mouth is closed. The second is the movement the character does when the mouth is open. And the last one is the movement the character does when the mouth transitions. You can see here I have changed my movement options to show off a couple of different ones. I sway back and forth when I'm not talking and I shake around a bit when I am talking. I transition now with a little hop. You can explore these options and decide which one you think works well for you. Next to the movement options is the set hotkey button. This sets the hotkey for this particular expression. Next to that is a toggle for hotkey mode. When you can see this little bounce, icon, that expression is only active when I'm holding down the relevant hotkey. Otherwise, it's turned on when the button is pressed and remains on until another option is chosen. This trash can deletes that particular expression. On the right hand side, I have a list of expressions. When I hover over them, it tells me the name of the state. In this case, it's called state one, and it shows me the key binding, which is numpad key one on my keyboard. This plus will allow me to add additional expressions or states. On the left hand side, I have the volume sensitivity and the delay sensitivity. The volume sensitivity changes how loud I need to be in order to activate the open mouth position on my character. The delay sensitivity changes how long the mouse stays open after I have stopped talking. Changing these settings around allows you to get a little bit more of a natural, you know, mouth opening and closing effect. This button changes which microphone is used to activate the character. It is by default 
the default audio input for your computer. This waffle button changes the background color. This is designed to allow you to key the background out when you bring the character into OBS. Depending on how your character looks and how you have OBS set up, different colors will do better. All of the colors are designed to be high contrast to make it easy to key your character out with the exception of the transparent option, which has no background. This folder option allows you to open up a saved VitoTube Mini setup. VitoTube Mini will save a whole character, all of their states, hotkeys, and everything in a special VitoTube Mini file when you press this floppy disk button. In that way, you can have multiple characters saved. I use this to change between Mothmom and Vin Diesel. Don't ask. Now that we understand all of the different parts of VitoTube Mini, Let's import a new character. Okay, so I have uploaded all of my images to, into VitoTube Mini. We have some blinking going on. We have our opening and closing mouth, and we also have a little bit of light animation. Let's go ahead and add another expression as well. I'm gonna click this plus. When we click this plus sign, another state is created for us. That's a copy of the original one. Let's go ahead and change the images to match our new expression. Okay, and here we are with our other expression. So you can see that we can be a little suspicious or we could just be neutral. I'm gonna add the bounce to both expressions. I think it's kind of cute, looking good. I've also saved our progress in our Vito2 mini file so we don't lose it. Let's set up hotkeys so we can toggle easily between the two. I'm gonna click the hotkey button and then you'll see the screen pop up. I'm gonna use the numpad on my keyboard as hotkeys for my character. So I'm going to bind neutral to four and sus to five. When I click the hotkey button and this pops up, I simply press the key on the keyboard that I wanna match and you can see that it's bound. I'll do the same thing for this expression. And now I can toggle between the two. I also have the option to turn this press and release option on. So now I'm normally neutral. But if I hold numpad five, I'm sus. Pretty handy. Great for winking and things like that. I'm gonna turn that option off for now. I also find the transparent background to be the easiest to set up. So I'm gonna continue using this sort of gray transparent option. Let's head into OBS and bring our character in. So I've created a brand new OBS scene with this coffee shop background, which I'm gonna use for my character. In order to bring my PNG tuber into OBS, I'm going to add a game source and I'm gonna call it avatar. Inside my game capture options, I wanna to select to capture a specific window and then choose Vito 2 Mini from the list. I'm gonna to choose to match the title always so I don't accidentally capture a different window. I'll choose allow transparency so that the gray background goes away. I will turn off capture cursor because I don't need that. And I can also turn off use anti-G compatibility. It doesn't really make a difference. And now we can see that I have my character in OBS. And if I use my hotkeys to switch expressions in Vito 2 Mini, it automatically matches in OBS. Fantastic. My character is in kind of an awkward spot though, and I have a lot of extra space on either side. This window size in red has to do with the size of the window on my desktop. So you can see that Vito2 Mini is full screen. So I get my full monitor width as the width of the PNG tuber. In OBS, I can hold down the Alt key and then drag the edges of my source over to change the size of the box that it's in. So being careful not to cut off any parts of my PNG tuber when I'm blinking or talking or changing expressions, you wanna check and make sure that none of the images get cut off. I'm going to trim the excess space away. And then I'm gonna resize my character and put them on screen wherever I like, which for this character is gonna be on this table here. If you want a very simple tutorial, you're already done, but we're gonna do some fancier stuff today, including setting up our PNG tuber so we don't have to duplicate the source over and over again. And in order to do that, we are gonna use an OBS plugin called StreamFX. StreamFX is an OBS plugin that allows you to do all sorts of stuff. When you click the go to download button, it'll take you to their GitHub page. Then you can go to the installation guide, scroll down to the operating system that works for you and follow the instructions. I'm on Windows, so I will go to download the EXE for the latest production as recommended. When I click this link, it gives me some more information about this build and I can scroll down to the bottom to download the EXE. Please be sure to follow the instructions in the installation guide. The EXE installer will set up all the files that you need for OBS and then you can close and reopen OBS to see all of your 
features that you've added. Stream Effects is gonna let us mirror sources, which is gonna let us set up some filters and do dynamic lighting. So I'm gonna remove my avatar from this scene. I'm gonna create a new scene that has all of the elements of my PNG tuber. Then I'm going to bring that scene as a mirror into other scenes. So I don't have to duplicate all the different elements of my PNG tuber. It also makes it simple for me to go in and adjust things in one place so that it's reflected everywhere. I'm gonna call this scene avatar mirror. First things first, let's bring in the PNG tuber. I have my PNG tuber here. Now let's bring in all of our accessories. I've brought in a pair of glasses, a newspaper, and a little carton of milk. So the first thing I'm gonna do is position all of these elements where I would like them to be. I'm not loving how this newspaper is sitting over my character. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit using source transformations. I'm gonna right click on the source and go to transform. Then I'm gonna go to edit transform. I'm gonna use this rotation parameter to change the angle it's at. I'm going to go into my original scene and I'm going to add a scene to it as a source. That's going to allow me to bring in this avatar mirror scene. So I'm going to trim this up again and make sure that all of my elements are properly in frame. Then I'll shrink my PNG tuber and move him to where I want him on the side of the screen. Now I can go into my OBS settings and go into hotkeys. I'm gonna to scroll to where it says avatar mirror and I'm gonna add a hotkey to show and hide my glasses. I'm gonna show the glasses with numpad six and I'm gonna hide them with numpad seven. And now if I hit seven, the glasses go away. And if I hit six, they come back. If I know I'm going to turn an element on and off a lot, I like to set a source transition. This means that the source will not just pop in and out. It'll have its own transition effect. So for the glasses, I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna go to show transition. So I'm gonna go to slide and it's gonna give me options for the slide transition and I can preview it. I'm gonna slide it up and then I'm gonna set the high transition to slide down. So now when I hit my hotkeys, you can see the glasses pop up and pop down. Now, when I want to bring my avatar into new scenes that I'm making, I can just bring this scene in as a source and it'll bring in all of the elements with it, the glasses, the milk and the blanket. And because the show and hide transition for my glasses happens in the source where my avatar actually lives, the glasses state will follow along in every single scene. So if I have two scenes and I put the glasses on in one, when I switch to the other, the glasses will still be on until I take them off. One last thing that we wanna do is add some dynamic lights to our PNG tuber. This just kind of adds some ambiance so that if I'm playing a game with a bunch of bloom or something that's kind of spooky, the lights match on my PNG tuber as though they were sitting in front of the screen. This trick is pioneered by at Virtual Graves on Twitter. They have a really great thread about how to do this trick. They explain about stream effects and how the whole thing works. I'm going to show you a really quick version of this, but you can really get into it and have a much more detailed experience if you follow their tutorial. So I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. I'm using some Halo gameplay for this because Halo has plenty of bloom and pretty lights. So I think it'll give us some nice effects. I'll link the playthrough uh, that I'm using as a background video in the description if you're wondering about who's playing the game for real, because it's not me. In order to achieve this effect, we need to create a reflection of the gameplay. I'm gonna go to plus and then I'm gonna go to source mirror and I'm gonna mirror my background and I choose the source background and you can see I've duplicated my gameplay. I'm gonna move it to the back so that it's behind all the other sources. Just know that this will work even if the mirror is not in the same scene as everything else. I'll right click on it and I'll go to filters. Then I'll go to effect filters, click the plus and go to blur. And then I'm gonna choose dual filtering. Dual filtering will just keep the general color. So when the image 
overall is dark, it'll be dark. But when it's overall bright, it'll be bright. You can see that I can sort of toggle also. How blurry do I want it to be? I think I'm gonna turn it to about eight. Now I'm going to add a filter to my avatar to reflect that lighting and show on me what's going on on screen. I'm gonna go to plus and I'm gonna add a dynamic mask. As the import source, I'm gonna add my background mirror and then I'm gonna go to each of these color channels, turn the base value to zero, and then change the input that matches the channel to two. So this is the red channel. I'm gonna turn the red input to two. And so now you can see that the mug change this color based on what's on screen. Because I applied it to the entire avatar mirror, it also applies to my drink. I might not want that filter in place in every single scene. So here I have my coffee shop background back and it looks a little awkward to be kind of dark and blurred. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the dynamic mask off and I'm nice and bright again. And you can bind that to a hotkey if you like, or you can have different uh, sources with filters on and off. Set it up however you like. Okay. And that is my detailed PNG Tuber tutorial. I hope that you found this tutorial interesting and helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments and I'll be sure to answer you as soon as I can. If there's anything else you'd like me to show you, then let me know also and I'll work on some other tutorials for some of the other things I do, which might be helpful for you. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day. Happy streaming.